Okay, welcome to section 4.2. Uh, this, this section consists of two theorems. The first one's called Rolle's theorem. And we basically use Rolle's theorem to prove the second one called the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem is really the most important of the two. That's the one we're going to use uh, in, this, in this course and as well as in Math 152 to prove a lot of re results. Rolle's theorem says if you have a function that satisfies these three conditions, let, let's, let's look at the third condition first. f of a equals f of b. So let's draw it like this. And then it's continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. So when you draw the graph, you can't have any jumps, vertical asymptotes. You can't, you can't even have any corners or um, vertical tangents. So you might want to draw it like that, for example. What Rolle's theorem says is there has to be a number somewhere between a and b, the open interval, x equals c, where the derivative is 0. f prime of c has to equal 0. That's some value. Now, of course, you could have more than one. If this is a and this is b, and f of a equals f of b, couldn't you draw the graph like this perhaps? Isn't it possible to have more than one place where the tangent line is horizontal? There could be a c1 and a c2. So Rolle's Rolle theorem says there has to be at least one. All right, anyway, let's look at three, three cases here. Let's see. On the interval a to b, let's suppose f of x is a constant function. Uh, clearly, uh, well, it is, it's, a, it's a continuous and dif differentiable function then. Is there a value of x equals c between a and b where f prime of c is zero? The answer is at every value um, uh, of, of, of x between a and b, the derivative is zero. So that, that satisfies the conclusion. Let's, let's suppose we have a continuous and dif differentiable function that isn't constant. Let's say it goes up at some point. By the extreme value theorem from 4.1, we know that uh, this function here obtains an absolute max on a to b. And since it goes up, it doesn't obtain it at the endpoints. It has to obtain it somewhere in the middle. Therefore, it has to obtain it at a local max. And by Fermat's theorem, the derivative has to be 0 there. And using the exact same reasoning, we, we can show that the derivative has to be 0 if, if the function goes, goes down at all. So what, what we just did there, folks, is we just proved Rolle's theorem. So when you read this in the book, the proof of Rolle's theorem, these are the three cases that they're talking about. Let's look at this example. Use Rolle's theorem to show that this equation has exactly one real root. Now, this problem here, you have to show two things. You have to show that it has a real root, and you have to show that it can't have two or more. We're going to actually use the inter intermediate value theorem to show that, um, that, um, that it, it has one. The intermediate value theorem we talked about in section 2.5, the intermediate value theorem says if you have a function that's continuous on a closed interval, a to b, it has to obtain every intermediate value between f of a and f of b. So I can pick any any y value between f of a and f of b, and it, it has to be an x value such that f of x equals that y value. Namely, 0, there has to be a value c here where f of c has to equal 0. And that shows that it has a 0, doesn't it? Okay, so that, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, you have to be clever though. Notice I picked, I picked uh, f of negative 1 equaling negative 1, f of 0 equaling 2, so I found two x values where one of the y values is negative, one of them is positive, so I can apply the intermediate value theorem on the closed interval from negative 1 to 0. It has to have a 0 there. Pretty clever, huh? Now, how do you show it can't have two or more? Well, what we're going to do is, is kind of subtle. We're going to suppose it has two and then show that this is not po possible. Proof by contradiction. If it has two, we're going to apply Rolle's theorem on the interval x1 to x2. Two values where f of x equals zero. Apply Rolle's theorem, and there has to be a value x equals c, where f prime of c has to equal zero, right? So that's how we're going to do it. All right, where, so if it has two zeros, uh, where x1 and x2 are, are some x values in the open interval negative one to zero, apply Rolle's theorem to close the interval x1, x2, Clearly, since f of x is a polynomial function, it's continuous on the closed interval x1, x2, and differentiable on the open interval. So Rolle's theorem says, if, if you had two zeros, there has to be a value x equals c, where f prime of c equals zero. But the derivative of this function, remember the function is um, x cubed plus 2x, so the derivative becomes 3x squared plus 2. The derivative can never be zero. It's always positive, in fact. So this contradiction shows that f can't have more than one zero. All right, let's, let's move on. So here we go. We're going to use, we're going to use uh, Rolle's theorem in class to prove the mean value theorem. 
The mean value theorem, the hypotheses are the same as Rolle's theorem, except we, we don't have that third hypothesis that f of a has to equal f of b. So the picture lo lo looks kind of like this. How could you possibly draw the graph from a to b? Well, you could draw it like this, maybe. What the conclusion says is the slope of the secant line, which in this case would be f of b minus f of a over b minus a, that's the slope of the secant line, has to equal the slope of the tangent line at some value c in the interval a to b. So if you draw this parallel fashion until it hits the curve, there's some value x equals c where the slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the secant line. That may not seem obvious why that's such a great theorem, but you'll see it's useful to prove other facts. The, the mean value theorem is, is usually written like this, in fact, we multiply both sides by b minus a. Here's an example. In this example, we're just going to verif verify what the mean value theorem says. First thing they want you to do is they want you to verify that this function satisfies the hypotheses of the mean value, of the mean value theorem on the closed interval 0 to 2. Well, that's easy because it's a polynomial function. It's differentiable and continuous on the entire real line, so it'll definitely be continuous on 0 to 2 closed interval and di differentiable on the open interval 0 to 2. The second thing they want you to do is to find the value c where the derivative at c equals the slope of the uh, secant line from 0 to 2. So what is the slope of the secant line from 0 to 2? It becomes f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. I get 14 over 2, which is 7. And what is the derivative at c? The derivative at c becomes 3c squared plus 2. So they want you to find all c such that they're e equal. And if you solve this for c, you get plus or minus the square root of 5 thirds. But in the interval from 0 to 2, which is just the positive square root of 5 thirds that, that satisfies the mean value theorem. Okay, so the mean value theorem provides a very nice way to prove some important facts, both for Math 151 and for Math 152. Uh, for example, if, if a function has derivative equal 0 for all x in a, b, then the function must be a constant in a, b. So any function whose derivative is 0 for all x in a, b has to be a constant function. And the way we're going to prove this fact is to let x1 and x2 be any two points in the interval and show that f of x1 equals f of x2. Wouldn't that do it? So um, we're going to apply the mean value theorem on the closed interval x1 to x2. The, uh, the uh, mean value theorem says this, f of x2 minus f of x1 is f prime of some c, c is some value in the open interval x1 to x2, right, uh, times x2 minus x, x1. Uh, but aren't we assuming f prime of x is 0 for all x in the interval a to b? So, so uh, f prime of c must also be 0. So the right side is 0. So therefore f of x1 must equal f of x2. And remember, uh, we're doing this for any two x's in the interval a to b, so that proves that f of x must be a constant function. Anyway, look, this, this next fact is really useful. You, you'll, enter, you'll encounter this very early on in Math 152. Suppose two functions have the derivatives the same for all x in the interval a to b. Then one of them must be a vertical shift of the other. One of them must be a constant added to the other. Uh, so, kind of like this. If this, is, if this is g of x and this is f of x, suppose you have two functions whose um, the slopes of the tangent lines are always going to be the same at any point. What, what, what this cor corollary says is one of them must be a vertical shift of the other. So to prove this, we actually already just, just about proved it. We're going to let this function capital F of x be the difference of the two. Now remember we're, we're assuming f of x equals f prime equals g prime. So if you take the derivative of capital F, you get f prime of x minus g prime of x, you get 0. And by the theorem we just proved, that means capital F must, must be a constant. That means f of x minus g of x must be a constant. That means f of x equals g of x plus the, a constant, which is what we wanted to show. All right, we'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye.